everyone, welcome back to the You Can Do STEM channel. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Ceci and today I will be discussing with you financial aid resources that could help you pay for college. Just a disclaimer, I am not a financial aid expert, but I will just be talking a little bit about the financial aid resources that I received as an undergraduate that helped me pay for college, and I'll be discussing some resources that I found helpful online. So now that you are finished with the application process and you've heard back from a couple of colleges, you now need to determine how you're going to actually pay for college. And hopefully this is something you've been thinking about earlier in your high school career, but in order to determine your financial need slash aid eligibility, you will first need to know the actual cost of attendance to the university. And this is calculated straight from the university itself. And it's based on tuition fees, as well as whether or not you're going to be living on campus, and your personal expenses. And so this is a rough estimate of how much it would cost for you to attend the university in one year, but it's a good estimate to have. And so now that we have the cost of attendance, we need to know how much your family can contribute. And so this is based upon what you fill out, called it the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the FAFSA. And the FAFSA is an online portal that basically asks for your parents' tax information to determine how much they make, as well as how much they can contribute to your college expenses, as well as how much you can contribute to your college expenses. So some questions that will be asked on the FAFSA is whether or not there's siblings you have that are also attending college because this will greatly impact how much your parents can actually contribute to your college education. It also, of course, asks for your parents' Uh, yearly income, whether or not your parents are separated um, and divorced, and um, all of this is calculated to determine how eligible you are to receive financial aid. And so what happens is the cost of attendance is subtracted by your expected family contribution and your financial need is then given. Great, so now that we know how financial needs slash aid eligibility is calculated, we can now go through some financial aid resources that you can use to help you close the gap in how much money you owe um, for your college education. So the first financial aid resource I will discuss are scholarships. And scholarships are great because they are money that you acquire because you filled out an application to receive them. And no, you do not have to repay any of the money back also, you can apply for dozens of scholarships, um, and you can receive dozens of scholarships. Um, so there's no limit on to how many scholarships you can apply to. You just can't apply to the same one using a different name twice um, in the same academic year. Some scholarships do provide more monetary rewards, such as maybe a $50,000 scholarship. Um, more of the larger scholarships are like this, like the Coca-Cola Scholars Program. Um, but other scholarships are rather small and easier to obtain. Um, so there are a lot of $1,000 scholarships out there um, that can help you decrease your financial aid need um, little by little. And so I also want to go over some of the scholarship myths that are out there just so you can know that no, you don't have to be an athlete to apply for scholarships or you don't have to be um, a genius to acquire a scholarship either. So I'm going based off of a handy dandy website called scholarships.com and some of the myths um, that are out there are that you should only begin searching for scholarships during your senior year. And while it's good that you search for scholarships during this time, this is actually pretty late in the game. You should be looking at scholarships during your junior year um, because there are just so many scholarships out there and it's going to take you so long to kind of comb through all the scholarships that you could potentially be eligible for. Um, so please take as much time as you need um, look early for as many scholarships as you're eligible for and apply for them. Another myth is that scholarships are only for top scholars or athletes. Um, this is definitely not true. There are many scholarships that actually don't take grades into account or athletic ability um, into consideration whatsoever. So please don't think you can apply to any scholarships or won't receive any scholarships just because you don't have a 4.0 or because you're not a star basketball player or football player. Another uh, myth that I just want to touch upon, scholarship competition is too intense, so why is it worth even applying? And so this is a huge one that I want to touch upon just because 
that's how I thought when I was in high school and I literally only applied to maybe five scholarships. Looking back, I should have definitely applied for more scholarships. Uh, I did not receive any of the scholarships I applied for. Um, most of them were merit-based. Um, I wasn't a horrible student, but I wasn't a 4.0 student either. So there are a lot of other scholarships that you could look into and comb through to see whether or not it meets your specific uh, criteria of who you are. And so scholarships are very important and something that you should take as much time as possible to look through now and to apply for adhering to all of the scholarship criteria as much as possible um, because that's probably the number one reason that people are not given a scholarship because they don't actually answer the questions that are asked in the scholarship application. And a lot of the times, like scholarship.com, all you have to do is fill out a general application or a general profile um, for scholarships.com and scholarships.com will help you in finding and guiding you to the scholarships that you would be most eligible for and then it would be your job to apply to those scholarships. So that's really helpful. So I'm going to put the link um, for that uh, website down below along with a couple of others that I found to be really helpful in regards to scholarships. So the next financial aid resource I want to touch upon are grants and Receiving grants was the way that I actually paid for college, so I have no student loans um, and I was able to actually receive money back for my personal expenses um, through the help of federal grants. And the way that I received these grants or was found eligible for these grants is by finishing my FAFSA application early in the game um, and having my university see what potential grants I would be eligible in receiving. And so basically when you fill out your FAFSA at the end, you will get an estimate of how much you may receive in what's called a federal Pell Grant. And so the federal Pell Grant is basically a need-based federal grant awarded to students who are in need of money to pay for college. And so specifically for me, my parents weren't able to actually contribute to um, paying for my college. And so FAFSA took this into account and provided me with an estimate of how much I could receive in Pell Grants. And so the U.S. Department of Education determines the Pell Grant eligibility based on the information provided on the FAFSA and a Pell Grant is credited to you each semester. Another grant is federal SEOG grants. They're need-based federal grants awarded to students with financial need um, and this is again based on uh, how much you will need to help pay for college. There are also grants that could be specific to your state or could be specific to your university. So I go to Tufts and at Tufts there are things called Tufts Grants. It's an institutional grant awarded by Tufts um, and it is credited each semester uh, to your tuition. What I received to help me pay for college is called the Texas Grant. And so that's a specific grant from the state of Texas um, that allowed me to pay for my schooling and I didn't have to fill out any additional information to apply for this grant. It was basically through the FAFSA that I was awarded it um, because they saw that my family couldn't contribute any money to my education. I really wasn't making enough money to put a big dent in my education um, and I had a couple things going for me. I had a pretty strong GPA as well as um, graduating a year early from high school. And so I think a culmination of those things allowed me to be eligible for the Texas grant and that grant was around $5,000 a year, so it was $2,500 each semester, which pretty much covered all of my costs for the University of Texas at El Paso. Um, and I also stayed in state, um, so that was uh, beneficial for me because I didn't have to pay out of state tuition. Okay, so those are grants. Again, you don't necessarily have to apply for them. It's really the FAFSA um, and the institution that determines your eligibility for those. So the next financial aid resource I want to talk about are loans. And specifically, I'm going to be discussing federal direct loans just because um, they're a better loan to take out in compared to private loans just because they offer some more benefits. And of course, with loans, you do have to pay back the money you receive, unlike grants or scholarships. And unfortunately, interest does accrue, so that means you'll be having to pay back more money than you actually took out. And so let's talk about two federal direct loans. 
The first one is a direct subsidized loan. And basically, a subsidized loan means that the government actually pays for the interest while you're still enrolled in school. This could be as full-time or half-time student. Um, so that means that the loan is interest-free while you're in attendance uh, to school. And the other one is the direct unsubsidized loan, which basically means that the interest is going to be accumulating even when you're enrolled in uh, college. And so you'll probably take out a combination of both these student loans. Also, there are some benefits to taking out federal direct loans instead of private loans. And so some of those benefits are, again, not accruing as much interest. Also, um, there's a lower interest rate when you do um, accrue interest. Um, and there's a postponement of payment or a deferment of payments. And so basically what this means is that the government will give you um, up to six months after you graduate from college to start to make payments on your loans. And so hopefully in this six month period, you actually find a job um, with the degree that you graduated college with um, and you're able to start paying back the loan. Additionally, um, if you end up not finding a job for some reason within those six months, you can ask for um, more time um, until you do find a job, which is pretty nice. Also, the amount that you pay towards your loans is going to be based on the income that you have. That means that the government will base their monthly payments on your income, so that's very nice. Later on, whether or not you work um, for a federal agency, you can also um, potentially receive loan forgiveness. Um, so those are some pluses, um, but hopefully you can find scholarships or receive grants um, that can help you pay for your college so that you don't have to be repaying a bunch of loans um, at the end. So the last financial aid resource I want to cover in this video is work study. And so work study, depending on whether or not you receive a work study position, is dependent upon the FAFSA that you fill out. So it's dependent upon the federal government. There's differences between federal work study and institutional work study. So federal work study um, is a program that is again determined by the federal government. Um, it subsidizes the wages you earn. So work study is not applied to your bill to reduce your direct charges. Instead, the money you earn will be paid directly to you each week through direct deposits to your bank account. Um, the funds are to be used for general education and personal expenses. So they don't necessarily have to go to your tuition, um, but they are just for you for personal and educational expenses as needed. Now there's specific work study for the institution you attend. So here at Tufts, the Tufts work study is a limited program which subsidizes the wages of a few undergraduates who don't actually qualify for federal work study, so this could include individuals who are international students. Um, and Tufts work study is for on-campus employment only. So a majority of the institutions who offer work study would rather you work on campus. But there are some exceptions like working at nonprofit community centers around the area. Um, so a typical student at Tufts would earn around $2,000 a semester. Um, and so most students might work at a cafe or the library, and again, they can work probably at a nonprofit community um, service agency around the um, Tufts University. Um, so if you are offered work study, you do not have to accept work study if you don't want to, but I know a lot of the times that um, individuals don't accept work study, it's because they're afraid that they're going to be working too much. Um, and that they won't have time to finish their studies. And so with work study, because people know that you're a student and you have a lot of classes that you're taking and homework that you have to do, um, their hours are pretty flexible. So for Tufts, you are working um, just approximately six hours per week. Um, so it's pretty flexible wh which hours of that you work. Also, since you are working for the institution, a lot of the managers and supervisors that are overseeing you will understand whether or not you have to work on homework or you have other things going on. Um, so work study is pretty flexible and it gives you some extra money for personal expenses. So I hope going over these financial aid resources was helpful to you. Again, I'm not an expert, so if you have any specific questions regarding any of these financial aid resources that I brought up or briefly discussed,
please go to the financial aid office of the university you plan on attending because they will be most helpful. So as soon as I spoke to individuals at the financial aid office at Tufts, I told them that I was interested in talking about some financial aid resources, they gave me this packet which is pretty much given to every incoming student, um, every student that's accepted, um, and it comes with all the information that I basically provided, um, which was really helpful. And also, again, there's financial aid experts that are always there to help, um, and basically the university is going to want to help you in any way, shape, or form to help you um, come to their school and get the education um, that you're hoping for. I will have all of the links down below um, for where you can find more financial aid resources, especially scholarships, um, and please send us an email if you have any questions or um, are dying to see a video based on a subject that you're interested in. And remember, you can do STEM. Mm -hmm.